What up, guys? It's your boy. Arun Brown. With another amazing- I don't know why I do this to myself, you know? This is the path that I've chosen to watch videos like this and damage my brain cells. The New York Times would soon be reporting that I was being investigated for child sex trafficking. Soon Insider would publish that I use hookup websites had I brought a 17-year-old across state lines. Of course, these things are all totally false. Verifiably false, actually. Printed with malice, a court may find. A court may find. A court may find. I hope I didn't hear that wrong. I hope I didn't hear that wrong because what I got from that was something that lawyers do. This guy went to law school. Lawyers do a lot of linguistic crap. They have to word things in a way so that if somebody says, no, that's false, actually. It's not just that they're doing a word trick, basically. And he does something very interesting here, which could be incident, could be an accident, could be incidental. But he's a lawyer, so he knows this stuff. A 17-year-old across state lines. Of course, these things are all totally false. Verifiably false, actually. Printed with malice, a court may find. So he could be saying, these things were printed with malice, a court may find. <laughs> By the way, a court may... F if you're saying a court may find, I didn't take a dump on my neighbor's lawn, a court may find. So did you take that dump? I, the court, it's yet to be seen in court, is all I'm saying. It was printed with malice, a court may find. Or these accusations are not true. These ac accusations are verifiably untrue. And they were printed with malice. All of that a court may find. <laughs> I really do, like, honestly, I know that somebody's going to have a hard time with this. I truly feel sorry for this guy because I think he was just born into creepdom. First of all, you're born into Florida. I know what that's like. That is a tough blow right off the bat. <laughs> okay? That's a hard one. Chances are you're going to be a creep if you were born in Florida. There's just something in the air there, okay? The piece from the New York Times reporter assigned to the Department of Justice left no doubt where the leak came from. They take leaks and embroider lies onto them. It's actually a crime to leak stuff like this, but that never stopped them when they wanted Trump's scalp, and they probably still do. But I wasn't surprised. This wasn't the first I was learning of false allegations of child sex trafficking. This is the first episode of his podcast. Very, I mean, very highly produced. Highly, hot, uh, very expensively produced, this thing. And he spends the entire first half of the first episode defending the investigation into his child sex trafficking case. Weirdly, I mean, if you go into TV history, actually, this was Johnny Carson's first show. It's like, uh, what? Uh, really big show, really big. Is that Johnny Carson? Is it weird, wild stuff? Weird. Welcome to my name's Johnny Carson. Welcome to my show. Um, just to start off, this is the first. <laughs> this is the first Tonight Show. I do have rape allegations, and we will. The first hour of this show will be me going over documents in a misleading way to weird, weird, wild stuff. I will say, though, he goes into this long defense of this thing. It is looking, I mean, we've been over this territory, but uh, it's it's just not looking good for this guy. I mean, we got the, the dude who sparked this whole thing, Joel Greenberg, which this guy has on social media, him and this guy at the White House, like, taking selfies together. So they're, these guys are clearly dudes. This guy, Joel Greenberg, who's already pleaded guilty to child sex trafficking. So it's not. And there's the other thing of around the same time that this started coming out, poor old Matt Gates asked Trump for a preemptive blanket pardon. It's not looking good. It's not. I, who knows? Of course, who knows? And you got to do the investigation and all this. And, you know, you're investigating a congressperson with a lot of money and all this stuff. How fair of an investigation could it be is a question I would have. But also, it's not looking good if I had to put money on what's up here. Oh, this guy's friends with a guy who pleaded guilty already to child se sex trafficking. He's like every in every uh, selfie with this guy. I would say, yeah, probably 
at least at very least i mean it's not good to be friends with Ch- uh, epstein type perverts but okay here's the here's the other thing here's the real cherry on top to this whole this poor poor thing this sad sad story so congressman matt gates effort congressman matt gates efforts to fight accusations of such trafficking his campaign is paying thousands to the same lawyer who represented jeffrey epstein gates has been on a nationwide no. tour and fundraising since the allegations came out According to a new campaign finance report, his campaign spent $50,000 on lawyers in June alone. Half of that went to the New York-based criminal defense attorney who represented Epstein, along with drug kingpin El Chapo. So we got my girl, Marge, Margie Green. I call her Margie Green. And I have to be honest, like, I, f- I cannot find her in very interesting. I never really cared enough about this goofball lady to get her backstory in any way i'm just like Ugh. i just assumed that the way she got elected in georgia is that she just wrote like on a on an arby's napkin with crayon she just wrote that it take guns take your guns away and then she gave it or vote for me and they gave it to them and they t- hightailed it to the polls uh to vote for old margie but her her story is actually far more interesting i was actually like let me there's there seems like there's something here let me look this up and what i didn't know about old margie taylor green is that she is an heiress basically she has this her dad started a very successful construction company and she grew up in the suburbs of atlanta in a in a town called cumming C-U-M-M-I-N-G. Don't, let's not, come on, guys. Are we going to go there? No, 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 no. Okay, if you want to party like that, where should you go? You go in the middle of the woods. (laughs) Never gets old. So she's born in this suburb of Atlanta. An heiress with this successful construction company. I found this in in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Businesswoman image key to Marjorie Taylor Greene's rise. This is the important part. Greene's campaign touted her experience helping run a family-owned construction business as preparing her to carry out her agenda. Oh, that sounds good. No. You're welcome. She enhanced the storyline in video ads and on social media with images that promoted her hands-on problem-solving construction executive experience. Green's business record, however, is one of the least examined aspects of her life. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution review found that while the Trump acolyte touted her experience as a construction company executive running her family business, there's little evidence of her involvement in the company's operations. From 2007 until 2011, Green was listed as CFO of the family construction company, Taylor Commercial Inc., in corporate registration records filed with Georgia Secretary of State. Yet for several years, during the time she was presumably helping her husband run the construction company, she spent her days at it. (laughs) I mean, of course, of course. She spent her days at a gym pursuing her passion for CrossFit training and traveling to participate in national competitions. (laughs) In 2015, she acknowledged in an internet radio interview that when she opened a gym of her own in 2013, she and her business partner knew next to nothing about running a business. This is pretty funny, too. And while Green has railed against big government, the AGC, that's this newspaper, found the family's North Fulton construction business profiteered for years from work on taxpayer-subsidized low-income housing. Whoops. No. No, 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 no. We know this person. All right. We know this person. We've met this person. Here we go. Green declined an interview request for the story. She did not directly address written questions from this paper, sent seeking to clarify her business record and involvement with her family business. And here's her quote. I mean, this just this says it all. Quote, the nature of your email and its questions show you have no intent to write anything positive about our company. Unless you're going to treat me like the princess that I am, the absolute princess on a pony that I am, I'm not answering any of your questions. Her, her and Matt Gay, honestly, the two princesses, the two, the two, 
the two special princesses that we all love. Special, very special princesses that we all should just admire. Wow. The hard work of these, these beautiful, beautiful people. So she's a princess, an heiress. She grows up in a, you know, a suburb of Atlanta, the metropolitan part of the, the state, okay? That's where those fancy pants are. That's where those college people are. They're looking at their books. You know what they do. They're all perverts. They touch each other's tookuses. So she moves to the 14th district, which is something like, let's, let's read about the 14th district, the place that she moved to run for office. Located in the, in the northwest corner of the state, Georgia's 14th congressional district is an overwhelmingly white and rural area where most residents have just a high school education and the median household income is about 10 grand less than the national average per census figures. So my sweet princess, my sweet heiress, moved to Trump country to bamboozle poor people into voting for her based on a bunch of nonsense, basically. Shock oh, wow, shocking. Shocking. People just vote on based on cultural nonsense in the United States? Oh my god. Wow. Wow. I, I'm truly shocked on both sides. Can create like an alternative truth with inside, inside of Washington where like it's going to be great for all of us when America's at war forever or when we drive down the wages of our people or when we allow these bureaucrats to have excessive control over people's lives all over. So, of course, this is just meaningless nonsense. He's like, wait, they're driving down wages. You're part of the Republican Party. Like, the party... <laughs> I mean, both parties don't want to raise the minimum wage, but you're part of the, you're part of the party that is, like, openly that's bad. <laughs> like, they don't even pretend to want... And you're like, the wages are really down. Oh, how about we raise them? No, because that's actually bad. But you didn't you just say it was... I don't know. But they do this the whole time. They do this kind of... Popul like fake populist Tucker Carlton to talk on this thing the whole time because clearly something about this kind of talk is resonating with people. This sort of really like like really like anti-capitalist talk basically is like resonating with people. This will not happen, I, d I don't think. But how long until one of their supporters is like, this is, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know what? I kind of want to learn more about this. Come on, kids, get in the truck. We're going to drive 3.5 hours to the nearest library to look into this more. He funded the gain of function, which created that virus from a, a virus between animals and turned it into a virus that's transmitted between people. And that that's so evil. It's it, the only term for it can be a bioweapon. Who man, this is this one's rough even for her because now they're just she's just outright saying like China's doing a war on us. China's doing a war. China. I mean, she's, yeah, she's saying Ch this is an attack from China. Cold War, class war stuff, where this is an, a princess here who's like, don't focus on a, any of the stuff that we, all these problems we got here, the real problems. No functioning healthcare system, no functioning edu educational system, all this crap. Really, no functioning government, because all that stuff is just completely run by uh, corporations and all this stuff. Don't look at that. Ch the Soviet Union, China. Is there any indication that they are actually have they? Is there any evidence that there's a an attack from the from them on us? No, but c could be. You never know. Just a, but either way, that's what we got to focus on. Okay. Nah. Ba boop ba beep and a booped up. Wait, I have a few more questions. Oh, there they left. And that's a bipartisan thing too. By the way, it's like if you watch. CNN and all this crap. There's a lot of China. China, it's coming to get us. Yeah, how? I don't know. You know, all our stuff is made. I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're going to get us. I don't know. It just says this on my paper that I have to read to you idiots. China's coming to put all your anger into China, those people. I don't know if you're familiar with a guy, little guy that goes by Jackford Chan. And he was kicking and punching a lot of people. That's all I'm, I'm just putting it out there. That's all I'm saying. So maybe we should focus on that a little bit more. Quit whining about all these uh, problemos here 
and maybe focus more on that guy because he's he'll get you with a foot right in the face if we if we don't do something now. power through the lens of political power, right? But these things are now interwoven. You know, when I saw all of these connections between uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Fauci and the U.S. government and this research in China that erupted the virus onto the world, it really got me thinking. <laughs> he does seem legit. I mean, I have to say he does seem legit stupid. I'm sorry. Not his fault. Not his fault. Well, maybe his fault. I don't know. Like if I was at some birthday party or something uh, i'm at some office party and this guy somehow i end up with a conver in a conversation with this guy i'd be like okay good thank nice to meet you dude have a good have a good time then we come back to old china here we go its role in disentangling our country from the chinese communist party well the problem is i think we're entangled yeah, I, I truly do. No doubt. China, China is the greatest threat to America. China is the greatest threat to the entire world. But I think that we're already Mike Pompeo told us he told us that China is embedded on every single level in in our country. They're on our school boards. They're in the PTA. They're in our colleges, universities. They make all our products. What? <laughs> they're embed. They're cut. They're embedded. They're embedded because they're in the school boards. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I went to pick up my kid from school. He had a, a ice cream all over his white shirt, of course. But uh, I noticed a Chinese fellow look. He had a look like, oh, yes, I got him, you know. Also, they make all our products. All the manufacturing happens there. <laughs> but for, so there's that, too. But I did that Chinese guy at the school. He was in the principal's office. I saw he was like, oh, you know, he's like, he's plotting. He's plotting something. What was he plotting? Uh, you know, Chinese things. This is important for later to them talking about China. We're, we're entangled with China, which is true. By capitalism. By global capitalism. We get all our crap from China. You know why? Because it's cheaper to produce over there. Pretty simple to understand. <laughs> Pretty simple to understand, but n no... But Margie, Margie here, the princess, the princess of Cummings, um, it goes on about how we're, we're entangled with China because of they're on the school board and they're in our neighborhoods. <laughs> I kind of love that if it was just like, like the gang of four kind of looking people, but driving by in like a black Cadillac, like watching, that'd be kind of cool. So now we get more into corporate control. Here we go. First to get congressmen and women to get reelected and that money will work against like an America first candidate to replace them. It's a total grift. And, yep. and, and, and I am concerned that the influence that special interests have on our politicians is impacting the vaccine debate that we're having in this country. Oh, a thousand uh, percent. Big pharma controls Washington. They control major media. I mean, look, if, if you are watching corporate media, take a moment to observe how many of the commercials are going to big pharma. And that impacts the news coverage. It just does. And you know what? The American people know that. Yep. The American people know that it impacts how politicians uh, treat big pharma. Yep. Okay. And, and so I, I guess, you know, how do you think about um, these vaccines, you know, and, and I, I'm not a person who criticizes those who choose mm -hmm. to take it, this really, I would really recommend watching this cause it is kind of fascinating cause he goes into this long thing about, look, big pharma controls everything. That's why the vaccine is bad. <laughs> so the, some of this stuff must be resonating with people like these corporations control everything. That's why I'm not getting the vaccine. <laughs> Hmm. I picture that same guy in the truck getting his kids into the truck. We're going to the library to look into this stuff. We're going to the library to look into this stuff. What if he's like in the car, he's thinking with his kids, like, what if there was, what if the economy was democrat? There was more democracy involved. Hmm. Then he gets in a car accident and dies. And that thought never spreads to the rest of Georgia. I mean, it's fascinating because... It really must mean that this stuff is resonating. People are pissed off about corporations. They think the country is controlled by corporations. They don't like big pharma. But instead of the real stuff, like that these big pharmaceutical companies and 
all of this crap and insurance companies and all this are making things like that everybody should have health care not possible it's the vaccine they're forcing us to get the vaccine that's the conclusion that's the conclusion i come to you this is the fourth time you've had covid i yeah but come on let's be you're not being honest you're not being you're not keeping it real and now we get to this great uh this great clip that uh, I think I've seen some other people talk about, but uh, this is classic. This is a classic one. This one's got to go down in the books as a classic YouTube clip. Here we go. Think about this, though. All throughout history, every time we've seen a country follow into Marxism, and as that changes, this is what happens, and it's in, it's happening right now in America. The small businesses get crushed, and it's the big corporations mm-hmm. that get rewarded by the government, and they meld together. Totally. And we have seen that big tech has already done it. We're seeing it with big pharma. We're seeing it with you know contractors, people that win big government contracts. Mm. These large corporations the are military re- industrial complex. military industrial complex is a major issue. So I have a term for that. I call it corporate communism. Corporate communism. Dis- Corporate communism is a very interesting idea. I like that term. You could shorten it. You could save time and just say capitalism also. So, yes, she's rediscovering a very interesting idea from the a guy in the 1800s, a pervert, came up with that when these companies have um, excess capital, as he called it, he spelled it with a K, though, because this pervert, didn't understand English, uh, didn't bother to learn English, that um, they will use some of that profit to control government, to skew government in their favor. Um, Kind of interesting also, he's associated with communism, which she's saying. So, so, I mean, you kind of get it. (laughs) You kind of get it. Uh, But what's interesting about this is that they are, I think, both Matt Gates and my girl Green Greeny here, our Princess Green, are um, they're both not. They don't take. It's it's a lot of individual contributions uh, that that kind of finance their campaigns. I could have that wrong. Maybe there's some like is corporate donors or something. But from what I read, they're both kind of. It's just individual people sending them money, which makes them kind of like the like bizarro world like shoved through a demented melted filter version of like AOC which is kind of interesting it makes makes you feel like the whole thing is kind of uh you know just entertainment maybe but um more than anything you gotta love her backstory just an absolute phony baloney and uh, we love to see it you know get get it while you can I guess But uh, a great podcast, definitely, definitely going to be subscribed to it, going to be, I hope there's a Patreon, I hope uh, Matt Gates has a Patreon, and he's like behind, he does behind the scenes where he's like, I'll teach you how to make ramen today. (laughs) Also, I'm in trouble for sex trafficking, but I still make good ramen. So, well guys, a, a demented YouTube channel. And also the one that I'm watching. (laughs) Bye-bye. Hey, everybody, and thanks so much for watching this video. Like all the other YouTube and podcast perverts, I now have a Patreon. Every week on this Patreon, I'm uploading two exclusive Patreon-exclusive shows. They're like real shows, more produced, more edited. A behind-the-scenes show where I reveal all my secrets and a show where we go deep on an important topic that you will want to know about. Also, you get the daily and complete live show audio-only feeds. And at the top level, for only 25 bones, you can become a producer. These people that you're seeing right here make this program possible. Without them, nothing. It goes right in the toilet, right in the trash, and we set it on fire. Ooh, these are the most beautiful people of my whole life. Look at these people. Are you kidding me? Yeah, right. Good, nice try. Good, nice try. Good, nice try. It's these people who make it work. So please, for Christ's sake, become a patron. Bye-bye. I love you.